Well, 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 here we are using some new features of Lightroom, the new Lightroom CC Classic, or is it Lightroom Classic CC? Anyway, uh, we won't go over the whole thing about the, now there's two Lightrooms. I, mean, I don't even have the other one. I'm not really sure how that other one works, but I've been testing this new update. And really, there's one feature and some uh, improvements, right, on, uh, on, on speed. And I have seen the improvements. And that's mainly when, you're, when you go over here into to develop module, right? Let's open up some panels right here. When you go to develop module and you're going from picture to picture, that happens faster. Um, and, and, and when you can start editing is when these aren't ghosted out. Let's see. I'll, I'll go to another picture. See, boom, 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 boom. Ready. It took a little bit of time. Boom. Ready. Oh, that was very short. Okay, let's go. Boom. Ready. Like that, that alone is great. And you have to keep in mind, I'm live streaming right now. And I'm live streaming even though I didn't really announce that to anyone that I'm doing this. I just wanted to record this. So there's not anyone online probably, uh, asking questions but what i've done is i've selected some pictures that i think will work well with this new range mask knowing when to use the new range mask and when not to right don't waste your time if you can do it without the range mask so uh, when what cases is it going to be work best because perhaps you're watching this uh having already learned what this range mask is maybe you have it and here i go i'll explain it first of all uh you can tell it's new uh, version here because oh well it says adobe lightroom classic cc so we answered a question from earlier new process version just the little heads up the moment that you make a small change process version not exactly sure what that new process version does uh, i hear rumors maybe it's about the noise uh, a new way to handle noise reduction sort of thing. But what we'll get to mostly is range masks. Range masks happen here with the graduated filter or the adjustment brush. So uh, uh, you know, well, okay, I'll show you how to use a range mask. Which one should we use it on? A very typical usage of a range mask is going to be skies and with horizons and and if you're using something like graduated filter and you want to darken a sky a little bit what happens is the moment you get down to the mountain sky down here mountain up a little higher you're darkening the mountain and let's say you don't want that to happen so you put a mask on a particular range and that range could be a color range or a luminance range let's try a color range shall we now you can uh, put a little po pointer here after you grab the little clicker thing i think it should default to have that open if you're going to click on the range mask of color that should be automatically it should it should select your little picker there's no reason that I can think of that it should not. And then what you do next is if you want to add a different color because you got this color, but it's a little wider up here and uh, it's a little different color of orange sort of thing right there, right? Uh, look how it's banding it now, you know? When you just click once, it's just gonna be that one. So it's just gonna take that color range. Well, you can decrease the variance here or increase it to add in a few more. Now, one of the big keys that you're gonna use quite a bit is the O key, because that's gonna show you this mask overlay, O for overlay. Um, and so we can shift click here as well. See, there we go. We could just add a little bit of, of uh, you know, more range to it. Because the colors aren't too close to each other, you can go way up with this. What you're 
we can start having the problems when the colors are pretty similar, right? Okay. So there we go. Let's take O off. And um, let's put this picker back so that those aren't distracting us anymore, right? H, by the way, is to hide that and H to bring it back. Now we can make... Oh, look, it's not got the top part. Use the picker, hit shift on that top area. Let's hit O to C, make sure it's got all of that. But now it's starting to, to put a little bit of that overlay into the white parts of the mountain. So some of that is still being impacted, but certainly a lot less than beforehand. Okay, so we're going to put that back. Now we're going to darken it. A little bit more and uh, what else can we do to it we can obviously reduce the noise from that section we can uh, give it a little bit more pop maybe through contrast and some more saturation uh, we're just playing around right showing you how it works but uh, let's turn off if you want to see what it looked like. Because here's the thing. Over here in the history, every single one of those point samples that you put in is going to be there. So where you're like, where did do I go to see the before? And the answer is you really can't. Not too easily. So if we hit H again to bring this back, um, we can just do this button. We don't want it to be too dramatic anyways, right? That's that's a pretty decently subtle when you when you didn't know what it looked like beforehand, you would think that's that's pretty decent. And uh we like it. So that's gonna be the most typical usage of a range math, in my opinion. Buildings also will be another big one, right? This is just this crazy cool color in the morning, right? Um, uh, and very high exposure because uh, we wanted the building to look pretty decent there. So let's, in, in my opinion, you get the picture looking kind of where you want it to be before you start doing the masks too much, right? So crop it out and, you know, do some of the other stuff that you want to do. This is sunset. This is sunset, I remember now. Don't want those cars in there. I don't use Photoshop, so I can't really get rid of those cars too easily. Um, and then L for lights out to get a better look. Maybe I'll put this a little closer. Third. Ah, oh, I really want to get rid of that car. Uh, that's the easiest way to get rid of it right there. Um, definitely going to get rid of this person, and that's easy because the background is pretty consistent. We'll hide that. I didn't like that spot. Eee, it's it even worse. Mm. Let's try to this side of it. You get to learn a few other things, huh? All right, that's much better. Smooth that down to make it not so noticeable. We'll do that later. So buildings definitely going to be one of the highest cases of this. So you can use again the brush. So what do we want to work on? The sky, perhaps darkening the top area of it, or do we want to work on uh, making that building stand out. So there's two options. Uh, the sky may be easier when you're using graduated filter, but the brush probably going to be easier. Well, definitely, there's no doubt. It's going to be easier using the brush. So I want to sharpen it, increase a little bit of the dehaze because we're kind of shooting into the into the sunset. So this area was a little bit darker anyways, and it just doesn't have that kick to it. It's a little bit of contrast. So I use a big brush almost all the time anyways. And you know that it's really kind of 
way too dark and contrasty and everything right now, but that's all right because it's a mask that we can change later. So I'm not too worried about that. And then we're going up into that steeple, which makes the sky around it just, it, that doesn't look good, right? My brushes tend to be um, low on flow and high on feather and density up, right? That's how I like my brush, which means I'm more painting, going back over it a couple of times. And uh, let's go down on contrast. We'll apply the mask later. D Hayes is definitely doing most of that. And um, let's actually, let's keep it white. I'm not trying to darken it. But D Hayes and Clarity certainly darken it. So before we apply it, we're, we're, we're not doing the mask yet. Um, we're just getting the filter to look all right. Because why bother doing the ra the range mask unless we get it looking the way we want? I think that looks pretty good right there, right? So let's put a little uh, range mask on that. And should we use color, perhaps? Let's use color. Now, we did the picker last time and hit shift. But uh, I think this time we're going to click and drag. And it will make a box. O to see that overlay. It is still way out there. So this is me learning <laughs> because uh, it's just got too much of that white on the background over there. So how are we going to do this the best? Are we going to try luminance perhaps instead? Let's hit the overlay. Let's take out some of the darker spots. See, it's going away from the darker spots. It's still up in the sky, and that's a bad part for it to have. This is going to be tougher. So, Ooh, all right. Let's go back to color, try color. We are going to pick that color. Good, nothing in the sky. Now we do have a little bit on the side, I guess that is similar to that. We can go down on this range, down more, down more. Okay, it's coming off a bit better. Down more. Wow. Okay. So that got rid of most of it. Certainly the stuff in the sky. What we didn't get rid of is right next to it here. So you're the old fashioned alt on that brush will erase. And it's not so bad in the sky. What happened is that these colors were too similar next to the building right here. Okay, got us much closer than normal. And uh, let's go back and that got us much, much closer than normal. Okay, there we go. That was quicker, way quicker than normal. Boom. And uh, when I hit this, it's removing all masks. So if I had some masks from beforehand, um, uh, oh, and, and the other one that we wanted to do here was the graduated filter for the sky. Okay, that color is a little like the building looks fine. That looks like the actual color that it should be. And black out on me. Dang. Okay, there we go. I don't know if you guys see that, but sometimes the screens screen blacks out when using Lightroom. This is the second computer. It's done it on, and it didn't used to do it back in previous editions, but it certainly does these days. So, just random. Okay, so what we want to do is maybe grab one of my preset ones for dark, just kind of darkening it down a bit. Maybe I'll do a little bit less. There we go. It's getting part of the steeple, which I don't like. 
So what we're going to do is use a range mask, and we are going to do a, we're going to try a luminance, but I think it's going to be color. So I want to do luminance first just to see. So we don't want it to be doing the darker spots. Let's put the overlay on. Still got a little bit of on the temple itself. Okay, you can see a lot less is happening on the temple, but a lot less is happening in the sky uh, on the lower part of the sky as well. It looks like it's just going to be affecting the top there. So we know what the mask is capable of here. So we're going to switch to color and see if it does better. So we're going to do we're going to do a box of like the whole range. Yeah, see, it's got a that's 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 a pain. Okay, so we're going to go back to this, and uh, it should default to that clicker. It really should. Now there we go, and we're going to shift and grab this here too. Okay, so it's it's got a tiny bit on here, but that's not too bad. Not like before. Okay, let's see what it did. And yeah, you can definitely tell. Definitely tell. And we can up that range or lower that range. And now we can. Uh, make an impact. That's interesting. <laughs> Remember, it's gra graduated filter, right? So you could do a very small filter, or a very small graduated mask right here. Just click and drag from here to here, and then it won't be much graduated at all to begin with, right? Uh, we can even impact that later. Put this away. And uh, we can move it. You can even rotate it if you go somewhere. I think it's right here. Okay. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. There we go. Okay. And then you can move this down. So you make those changes afterwards. Graduated filter, I usually put that filter on and then check the uh, the impact. What I want to do. Darken. We don't we obviously don't need to change the color. I do actually like that. I mean, it was more of that yellow color, but if I added a little bit of blue, that'd be kind of cool. Um, uh, other things you can do is maybe just make it kind of more less oh more way right if it's got some banding that's always good to do just a little softer because I dehazed it dehazed it and uh, not really I'm trying to darken it am I we're just playing around we got the mask on. And you could in introduce a new color too. The higher you go, the more impact it will be. Huh. I don't do this very often. Just doing this for to show the different options that you guys can have. I'm liking it. Okay. Those types of things like mountains like this. That's going to be very typical. And in part of Lightroom, you want to go fast, right? Like learning how to use a range mask is pretty easy, actually. Uh, so I got a sharpening brush on this. And I guess I really wouldn't mind if it sharpened the mountain as well. Obviously, I wouldn't mind too much. So I'll just leave it like that, not use a mask. But what I will do. Sharpen and maybe a little bit of darkening, not much, in that section of the sky. And in the end, I'm going to have to come back and do a little bit of the mountain as well. Let's see where that mask ended up. 
So I could clean it up with Alt and remove it off of that. And, and so you have to ask yourself the question, maybe that is just the fastest way to go about it. Knowing when to use the range mask and when not to. I think that's going to be the biggest tool. So really, let's not do this one because it didn't need it. Let's go to something like this vehicle, my awesome truck. And let's go to this picture because there's a couple areas that we could range mask. And previously, I would use maybe, I want to lighten up. Man, black cars, black trucks are tough to take pictures of. Tougher than most other. Man, if I had a red truck, you know how easy that would be? Or a nice blue one? Okay. So what we did here is we could we could go back and we could clean it up with the alt and that could be faster or we could use a range mask and just pick the luminance so we don't want it to affect the brighter areas. We want it to just be in the darker areas. There we go. That should work just fine. It's still going to lighten up the areas down here, but what I was looking at mostly was when it was up and around there, and I didn't want that because I don't want that ghosting look. Okay, you can still come back and apply a little bit more when you're in this, even with the overlay on. I will turn the overlay off, and I'll go extravagant way up on this. And you can see it's still got a little bit right here. So I'm just going to manually get rid of that. So that was faster than adjusting. Oh, see, there's nothing there. I don't know why I even did that. That was much faster than adjusting the range mask. So again, range part of knowing range mask is when to use it and when not to. What's going to be faster? What's going to be easier? We all want to save time and get back out there shooting, right? So there we go. Okay, let's look real fast. That just lightened up the truck real good. And, and for once, my truck was decently clean. It's not always that way. The other obvious easy one is uh, this top one. We want to start going a little bit faster. Knowing how to use something doesn't take long. It's, it's getting faster at it. That's better. I want to check to see if... I'm going to play around with what I actually want to do with it. Is it actually going to look all right to begin with? Why well, do the range mask if you do, in the end you're like, man, not happy with it. So what do I actually want to do with this guy? Do I something? Something's missing. It just was such a boring sunset. Um, maybe up on saturation. Haze really took a lot out of it, huh? I don't know. That just can't hurt. Did that actually make it better? Is the question. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Significantly, right? That looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to back it off because the difference between the blown out area and the, and the area that actually was able to go down a little bit blue was too dramatic. Looked a little weird to me. So there's not too much I can do because I had too many blown out highlights. It's just, it's not an HDR, right? Just a regular picture. The D800 wasn't even my D810. And then I could introduce a little bit of color into it. And you can really see that color effect on the top of the mountain, which is what we're going to do a little bit later, right? Okay. Now, I think I like it enough that I'm actually going to use a mask. And uh, what mask are we going to do? Let's do a luminance mask. So let's just not have it impact. Let's do the O. And let's drag it until we stop seeing it impact the mountain. There we go. 
it's stop stopping the impact on the mountain yeah one of the other things is you is you can't really drag you can't just click you have to drag but then once it's over there and you want to go back you can click the other direction isn't that ridiculous that's got to be a bug at least it's a bug on my computer so there we go let's take off the overlay let's take let's hide that and let's see the before and after has a tiny bit of impact on the mountain i could change the range a little bit but i'm pretty good with it so there we go there's one example for like a truck let's try let's try something let's do people here's a good example for people it was, it was very cold that day well cold it wasn't that cold it was pretty cold for for the bride and her hand got very very cold so it is the wrong color <laughs> Not a picture taking fault. It is it is the problem. Well, yeah. She just her hands really actually did they got cold. She's a skinny one. So let's go to warming up brush. Let's just warm up that skin. And I don't want it to affect the area around it, even though it's not gonna be that big of a deal. So there we go. I don't know if we can see it very well. Maybe I'll, I don't need to zoom it in for myself, but for you, I will zoom it in. So there we go. Okay, let's see what the mask looked like. Definitely got stuff all around it. Got parts of the dress, which could stand to be lightened up. That's a good usage of the range mask is for dress. Let's just do color. And it doesn't auto default to the picker, and that's just ridiculous. Now let's see the brush. Still got a bit of the white there, so we're gonna go down on this. It's got a little bit less. Okay, that's good. We can always just do a picker. There we go. So it doesn't need to affect this area quite as much as it does this area. And now we have a lot less even there we go okay so let's take off the overlay and you know what we're just gonna while we're at it do a little bit of noise reduction on just that hand because it was in a dark area and uh there we go okay so back to the full picture that was a very fast and easy way to change that and her hands a little bit dark there we go boom that was cool i enjoyed that all right what's another good eyes perhaps i mean i tried to find one where the eyes were big and and kind of a little bit dark but I, you know in my rush to find a few for you guys this is the one i found which obviously is not dark her eyes look pretty decent but we're gonna maybe sharpen them up. We'll use a little brush. And uh, doing the feather probably isn't a good idea when you're trying to be very selective on an area. But I've got it there. The mask is going to work just fine. We're gonna maybe do a little bit of brightening on her eyes, not too much. I don't want people to think I did it. I just want it subconsciously to make an impact. Let's see the overlay. It's, it's kind of it's a very faint overlay because of the flow that I chose. And now range mask. Now we're just going to do if I do luminance and do just the darker areas, then we're definitely getting the eyelashes above it. So if that's all right. That's what's going to happen if we do, but it won't get that white area, which is what we're most concerned about. So we know luminance can work. So that way we're, we're I'm gonna try color. There we go. I just gotta hope I didn't choose 
the white. Okay, so I'm just going to do a dot there. And uh, we're going to increase a little bit. It's not going to go into the whites because that would take a lot of increase. And I think that looks good. I will show you up close. Yeah, the overlay goes into the some of the eyelashes. Not a big deal. We can remove a little bit. Yeah, I, I like that too. So removing, getting a little closer, seeing what was going on a little bit better. And now we're going to hide, remove the over, well, put that back. And then we're going to remove the overlay and do that. So let's see. Well, you have to be in close. Let me get you in close. There is impact. There you go. It is, it is substantially sharper once you get in close. That's that's as much as far as I want to go. I don't want to get it too crazy. I'm not that kind of editor. All right, something like perhaps some sky. We want those blues. Well, one of the things is, you know, why do that when you can just go to HSL and go down on this, right? That looks normal. And that may be the case. That may be the case, I think. I mean, really, what is a range mask going to do much better than the HSL pinpointing those blues is going to do? Now, we could use a gr graduated filter and come from the left, just kind of get that part of the sky. We can maybe use one on um, darkening the grass, actually, is probably going to be our best case. So if we darken, and it's a distinct color, the green from the whites, so we could darken this area a little bit less in the darker spots. So let's put a math. Let's do it. Let us do it. So there we go. That looks good. You know what? That part, side of her dress could stand to be darkened a little, so what do I care? I'm not going to arrange mask it. So it looks great. I mean, if you wanted to change the color of the grass, you didn't want to change the dress, then I guess you've got a use case scenario, right? Really, what I've done for all these years, just dodge and burn here. That's just fine. I don't need, I don't need, uh, I don't need a range mask on that. What I do is this early morning first rays of the light, and looks pretty funky. So let's make sure we've got white being the correct white. Okay. That's not what I remember at all. <laughs> you got that warm color hitting their shirt. Of course it changed their shirt color. That's what the sunrise did. So let's go back to as shot. Um, it's a little warm. What do I want the rest of the picture to look like? Let's not think about their skin right now. I mean, first of all, let's, <laughs> let's make that even. And let's go down here. Lights out. I wanted this unique cropping. Let's also get rid of this spot. I've since removed it. It was just a big thing on my sensor. We got a 135 shot at 2.2 so if you're wondering it's all up there for you to look at all right so is this kind of what i want it to look like well let's finish up the picture a little bit more i kind of want this kind of painted in natural vignette but not over here that's too much okay I like the the picture. Obviously, their skin is what I don't like there because that early morning sunrise on them just painted everything really, really warm. So let us use a light brush 
and uh, let's go down on the temperature a little bit. And then let's uh, try to be, you know, particular on this. Maybe let's do the flow up a little bit more because we're going to use a range mask. So we, if it bleeds out, so feather down. So if it bleeds out, the range mask is what's going to help us. We don't. And let's do a little skin down here. Uh, I can tell there's a couple of things I don't like about this. This mixture over here, definitely don't want it to be that big of a change in exposure. I want to desaturate a little bit. Remember, before I'm even doing the range mask, I want to make sure that I actually appreciate the range mask. Um, let's see. What if we did whites to give it a little bit of contrast over the exposure? where the exposure will get rid of darks and bright areas and combined similarly, whites will kind of, will do a little different, right? It'll preserve some of the highlighted areas. All right, all right, still a little warm, still a little warm, maybe. Uh, definitely is not work there. I like it. That's certainly much better than it was, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> a lot better. Okay, uh, I mean, you can fine tune this a little bit. You can even introduce, you know, make them blue. <laughs> I'm just playing around. We don't want to do this. So how do we get rid of that? Nothing on there. Okay, boom. Now let's choose the color we want it to impact. It should really needs to default that way and let's check it out boom that was an easy one because the colors are so distinct from the sky that was easy didn't really have to to mess around with that a little bit in fact you could go up with it and extend it a little bit more just to get the outer reaches a little bit i feel like it's just a bit more we could do it's just, it's got a funky color. Okay, you're getting an idea. Um, I don't know that I like this that much. I think the sky, that sunrise impacted their skin so much that I don't know it's going to take a lot of effort. I mean, like, you know, 20 minutes after this, after the sun initially rose, then then the, the, it looked fine. But you saw the range mask in, in practice, and that's what was important. I had plenty of other pictures from that photo shoot, too, so it's not like they need that one. That actually didn't end up in their, in their uh, pictures that I'm giving them. So that was just a kind of standby picture. Uh, the other ones are already selected. There's like 70, 70 other pictures. So I'm going to do some of my edits first. Oh, I don't like the brush this way. I needed to turn up the feather more and down the flow. Okay. Oh, that's why I like it. All right. So I was thinking about doing showing this one with uh, maybe some dehaze and and sharpness and uh, just impacting the yellow section. How about that? Let's just impact the yellows. And maybe a little bit brighter. More saturation. Just playing around. All right. Now that overlay just got kind of everything but we don't want it to have everything. So we're gonna range mask. This should be an easy one. We just wanna get that area. There we go. Or we could do luminance and 
not include the darker areas. And I think that actually got a faster, easier way to do it. Let's go a little bit further. There we go. Now we don't have impact on the greens and the, some of those other areas. Okay. So we will turn off the overlay. There we go. While I'm at it, this is too dark over here. Not that this is like an amazing picture or anything. Just thought it was a fun example of different types of pictures you can do this with. How about if you were to get a picture of a person and you wanted to, uh, you, we do a lot of, uh, we got some sharp, sharp lenses these days and sometimes too sharp for skin, right? So let's do that softening brush. This is, I think, the default one on Lightroom. All it does is just kind of go down on clarity, right? So uh, we don't want it softening the eyes and the eyebrows and, and, you know, like some of these spots. So let's do a mask. Let's do a color, which means some of the creases will still be softened, but at least the eyes and the hairline and the lips won't be, right? Okay, so let's see how that worked. Oh, that's pretty good. We can go give it a little bit more range. And then we put that away and we can add in some areas that we missed, right? We did not even paint. We don't have to be as careful because it's not going to get those eyes anyway. It's not going to get the hair anyway. So that's a speed sort of thing. There we go. So there, we softened. And uh, I can, I guess, zoom in for you guys. And we can do this before and after. Very nice. And the eyes stayed the same. You don't have to have it this far down. You can, there we go. And uh, going up on whites, even kind of, because clarity, going down on clarity sometimes makes things darker. Or up on clarity makes things darker. Down on clarity just kind of muddles things a little bit more. So as I go up on on, on the whites that I just did, it kind of retained some of those, those highlight features in the face to give it character. So there we go. That was a good, fast case scenario right so i think those are pretty good examples for y'all's sorry i'm yelling oh um how about this one how about this one just a cousin and her friend cousin cousins together Ooh, i like this one let's do this one um i like the picture i've edited it a little bit already um, what I want to do, it's just it's not a big deal. Like, that's just the way that the room was lit up. Like, it was a kind of a yellowish sort of room, and I changed the white balance. Well, I used a flash, so we had a couple of light sources conflicting. But let's say we want to... Um, dang, okay, there we go. We're going to go down, and we're going to change that background. The thing is, those yellows are obviously going to be a little bit closer to the people's skin texture. So this isn't actually, this is not a super easy one. This is going to be a little challenging. This may be a good place to, to finalize this. This could be a case where just uh, doing the alt, let's put the overlay on. Doing the alt could be faster. You know, I think I think this is the case. This is going to be faster. 
than doing the the range mask. That's my opinion. But you could try the range mask anyways. And what would I do? Because it's a similar darkness, don't you think? Let's try it out. So we won't have it impact dark areas, but we want it to impact some of the dark areas. Some of the bright areas. You know, not a big deal. We don't want that range mask after all, do we? We don't want it. So we're going to take it off. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's awkward. We want that range mask back on for sure. That makes a lot of difference. Interesting. Interessante. It's just a tough one. You get close colors. But this definitely improved it a little bit. Okay. We got to end on some high note of one that really works super well. One that really works super well. Let's try this one. Early morning twilight colors looking good we are going to do some of our initial edits on the picture well i'm going to do a couple here you ready for this let's do this let's do a a sharpening on that sky to give it some real more mostly dehaze and then we're going to get that whole sky there we go. We got the whole sky, but we got a lot of that temple, which could be sharpened up. That's not a horrible thing. So we're not going to be too particular about this range mask. We're just going to click in there and then go way up with its leniency on that mask. Okay. Yep. So it's a little bit less on the temple. But it's still going to be on there because we don't mind it being on the temple. And look at that. That's pretty cool. We don't want it to be that dramatic. And we could even lighten it up a little bit. Okay. The other thing we want to do is maybe a little bit of light lightening. Lighten it up a little bit. But mainly maybe desaturate the temple just a tad. Change the white balance on it because you got some funky colors gr glowing on it while the rest of the world, the grass the, the and the sky are obviously not lit up by those colored lights. Um, we are going to brush onto it. Not a huge impact. We got a big fat brush that didn't take us long, but obviously put a lot on there. So now color picker. Boom. <laughs> that was crazy fast. Now learn what scenarios. You gotta watch a few of me doing a few of them, right? Learn what scenarios are going to be the fastest to use, right? When can erasing the mask be faster? Uh, auto mask, you always got that option, which I kind of hate. I'm just probably not good at it, right? So that temple, I think, looks a lot better. Huh. Yeah, look at that. The color on it way better way more it's actual color 
So I like it. Um, the picture's not obviously done, but the, the masks are. The masks look good. I would probably, if you're wondering, add contrasts. For some reason, contrast was not added. That looks so much better. Really happy about that. Before and after, shall we? Okay, once I get good at this, this should only take me less than a minute. And that's how long I usually try to spend on a picture is less than a minute. Uh, yeah, that was a great one to end on. So I think I'm going to uh, let you go now. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, what was that? Like... Uh, we get about 30 minutes of uh, showing off the range mask editing. If you have any other questions, leave them below. If you want to see any other uh, uh, example editing, and I, I do the example editing a lot on online here because, well, I need to do the editing anyways. So I don't mind talking while doing it and sharing it with people. Uh, we'll check you out later. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.